just turn to Matthew chapter five. I'll get there in a little while. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, I started a message and I thought it was gonna be like, just like one message, but it's turned into three weeks. So um, I just wanna just share a few things with you as we get into this. And it all started talking about, we've been talking about Jesus and unpacking Jesus. And we started with talking about Jesus is peace. So we were talking about peace and we started off talking about that he is the prince of peace, meaning he's the author and the distributor of peace. Ephesians 2 says, for he himself is our peace. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 says, now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. So we're unpacking who this person is, that when I receive Jesus, I receive all that he is and he is peace. Now, when I encountered God in my sister's living room in 1993, now, I couldn't have necessarily called it peace at that time. I mean, I, there was something that came on me, came in me, healed me a respiratory disease, and, and lifted me up off of that sick bed to where I could, where I could breathe, where my fever was broken. And, and I can look at it now, and when the presence of God came in, and I called on Jesus, and Jesus answered, the peace of God manifested, and the peace showed up in my life and turned chaos into order. You see, something we, learned, uh, something we learned last week is we talked about how Jesus, he said, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also because that's why I'm sent. I mean, I'm here to preach the kingdom of God. This is why I came, and I'm going to go to other cities also, and I'm going to preach the kingdom of God. And then we define the kingdom of God out of Romans 4, 17, and it says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But you have to understand, all those three things are all of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen? All those things are of the Holy Ghost. And we learn that peace is not an emotion. Well, I'm just at peace. Well, pastor, I'm just at peace. But the thing is, is you can be at peace when everything is going wrong around you. Because I believe the peace of God is the power of God that produces the calm. No, let's think about Jesus for a moment because remember, everything he came to do was to release the kingdom of God in the earth. And if we look at the story in Mark chapter 4, the end of it, and you know the story about the disciples, they were on the boat and they're going to the other side, right? And as they were going to the other side, we know a hurricane storm came up against them. But this hurricane storm wasn't about giving them a bad day. This hurricane storm wasn't to see and test their faith. This hurricane storm was meant to do one thing. It was to keep them from going to the other side. Why? Because on the other side, there was a demon-possessed man that needed to be set free that was keeping 10 cities in bondage. So, so the enemy did not want them to the other side. And you have to understand that the enemy doesn't want you on the other side of your difficulty, your addiction, your storm, because on the other side of your freedom, there's people that need to be set free. There's people that need to be delivered. So often when we look at that story and we see Jesus asleep in the back of the boat, but yet too often we look at that story, we see ourselves as the disciples instead of seeing ourselves as Jesus. You have to stop seeing yourself as something that's less than and start seeing yourself that one is in Jesus. And if we don't truly understand the reality of the fact that I am God inside minded, that, that Jesus is in on, on the inside of me, the greater one lives on the inside of me. He sent me the Holy Ghost to empower me in every area of my life. If we don't see ourselves that way, then we'll constantly be, be, be like the disciples and we'll seeing our boat filled with water, trying to get the water out, trying to get the water out. And we're constantly... Going to Jesus, don't you care that I'm perishing? Don't you care that I got this, this financial issue? Don't you care about the sickness in my body? Don't you care? When all the while, he wants you to understand that you are Jesus in the story. Yeah. To you, you flip the script, and all of a sudden now people are coming to you because you're at rest because you know who you are. You know, you know the Holy Ghost, and you know the Word of God. Jesus could say, peace be still to the storm because what he was filled with. Yeah. John 1 tells us that he was filled with grace and truth. Yeah. 
And when you're filled with his ability and you're filled with his word, there's no storm that can defeat you. There's nothing that can hinder you. But what hinders you, what can hinder us is the fact is, God, well, don't you care? And we, we live from one struggle to another struggle, and we constantly view ourselves from our human weakness instead of the fact that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The church in our day and age needs to be the ones that are asleep in the back of the, no, back of the boat because we know who we are and we know that our God's got us. Come on. So the world will be coming to the church house or to you as a, person, as a person and coming to you. And it's like, don't you see all this stuff going on around us? Don't you, don't you see the, the struggle in the stock market? Don't you see the sicknesses that are? Don't you see that? Peace be still. So he went about preaching the kingdom of God. But what did he preach? We know, well, Luke 4, 43 says, I must preach the kingdom of God. And we know the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But what did he preach? The Spirit. Go back to the very beginning of Luke 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to heal the broken hearted. So we go on and we can read the list of what, what Jesus was saying there, but ultimately, what was Jesus doing? He was bringing peace to areas of people's lives that didn't have peace. So if you're going through a storm right now, I declare the peace of God over you. I declare the kingdom over you. I declare the kingdom realities will become a revelation to you. That you're not just barely getting by. You're not barely, you're not barely overcoming. No, you, you, get a, you get a fresh revelation on the inside of you that you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we have to stop living from a position of weakness and start living from a position of our authority. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, I think it says this, and may the peace of God. So when you look at peace as a force and not some sort of well-being, if you look at peace as a well-being, you'll say, oh, the peace of God. It says, may the peace of God sanctify you wholly, completely, spirit, soul, and body, that I might preserve plain, blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth, he will also who will do it. So this peace upon my life that separates me, spirit, soul, and body, meaning the peace of God, the force of peace can, can correct your mind, will, and emotions. Yes, sir. Spirit, soul, and body, and be preserved blameless. Jesus operated in love, but he operated in power. I think it's in Matthew 21, he, it tells of Jesus when he went into the synagogue. He went into the temple. And we know it's really he's doing a response out of the Psalms when it says, the zeal of my father's house has eaten me up. He goes in and he sees everything that's happening in the temple. He's seeing everything that's going on. You, you want to see what peace does? Sometimes when we think of peace, we're like, I don't really like that. I don't really like that they're doing that. We know he took a whip. He went into the synagogue and he chased out all those that were selling in the temple. He knocked over the tables. And you're like, Jesus, what's the big deal? Come on, Jesus, aren't you so loving? No, peace is a force. 
Why was Jesus upset? Because the temple was no longer being the temple of what God meant it to be. The temple was be a place where people would come and receive from heaven. Instead, it became a place where, where people were taking from people. You notice, if you go look at, look at this in Matthew, I, don't, I wasn't planning on going here, but you go to Matthew 21, you read that, the next verse after Jesus chases everyone out, the next verse says, and then the lame and the sick were brought to him and he healed them all. But it says, no, because it's still in the same context. He said, and the lame and the sick were brought to him in the temple, meaning Jesus didn't leave the temple yet, so he got out the chaos so peace could come and bring peace into people that were broken. You're like, maybe you're like, well, why, well, Pastor, I don't know why I keep, why this is all going on in my life. Maybe you need to get the chaos out. Maybe you need to, maybe you have the wrong perspective about church, money, your finances, your thought life. Maybe, maybe you're, you're just, you, the enemy is kind of all taking up too much space in your heart. And it's time for you allow the peace that comes from the word of God and knock over some tables in your heart because it's in that then God can bring the healing, bring the direction, bring the guidance, bring the vision to your life. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Romans 16, 20, it says, and may the God of peace crush, soon crush Satan under our feet. Hallelujah. The peace of God. May God's peace crush Satan's head. I'm telling you, peace is a force. Peace is power. Hallelujah. Jesus went about doing good and healing all. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you, need to, you just need to tell the enemy, hey, I'm walking in God's peace. I'm walking in God's peace. Hallelujah. I'm walking in God's peace. Hallelujah. And as Billy Brim and Miss Gloria taught us years ago, peace, shalom of God is nothing missing, nothing broken. The peace of God is to bring us into a place of completion, not just make us feel good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's look at Matthew chapter 5. You ready for part 3? Yes. Matthew, Matthew 5, look at verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Can, can we read this together? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just let that, let that settle in just for a moment. So let's, we, I like to invert scriptures without take, changing the meaning of them. So we can look at it this way, that children of God, sons of God, are called to be peacemakers. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm called to be a peacemaker. No, but keep, but get that peacemaker in the, this peacemaker isn't this passive position, but it's a position of confidence. Because what you, another thing we need to see about peace and why peace is so connected to our believing, because Romans 15, 13 tells us that. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So there's got to be this joy in peace that is operating in my life when I'm in a position of faith. Because another thing is I have peace. Like if I, if I, if I were to go to Maryland where my, where my mom and dad live and, and I would show up, at their, show, out where they, show up where they live, I could just walk into their home. Why? Because I have peace because I know who I am. And I know where I come from. I know my DNA. And because I have peace, you see, when someone has peace, they have confidence. Yes. Amen. See, the enemy's always trying to get you unsettled and not have confidence. But really, in reality of that, if you don't have confidence, you ultimately don't have peace. That's it. That's good. Because I can have 
peace in the midst of the storm. And when I do that, that's why Jesus was able to wake up and just say, peace, be still. Why? Confidence. Because he was peace, had peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Say, I'm a peacemaker. Say, I'm a peacemaker. Say, look out, devil. I'm a peacemaker. Look out, world. I'm a peacemaker. Jesus was a son of God, and he was a peacemaker. But his way of making peace is a little different than in our natural understanding of what making peace is, correct? Jesus wants his followers to be peacemakers. Now that you know what that is, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Let's look at Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Let's look at verse 1. Holy Spirit, thank you. Mm. Actually, we need to go to verse nine, chapter 9, verse um, right there, the last verse there. It says, then he said to his disciple, disciples, and we can say followers, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. This morning in this message of being a peacemaker, my assignment is to provoke you to be mobilized to do kingdom business. Come on. Whether that's in the business world, whether that's in ministry, whether that's if you're, a, if you're an at-home mom, it doesn't matter. I'm here to mobilize you this morning. Amen. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, because of that, therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Chapter 10, verse 1, and, so he's still in thought here, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him. This is something we we need to understand, and this is the core that's going to bring success to your life. It said that, he said his 12 disciples, he called them to him. He didn't call you to ministry. He called you to him. Now, you may, have, you may have a gifting of business, a gifting of ministry. You may have a gifting of a fivefold ministry, but your first calling is to him. And it's out of that being called to him who is peace, him who is righteousness, to him who is joy. He called them to him. Too often people want to, I'm in ministry, but the thing is, is what are you going to minister? Are you going to be an echo of someone else's voice? Or are you going to have a true experience that you can release into someone else's life? Now, you may be a great person of a lot of charisma, but after 15 minutes, you better have something to say. You better have something to say. Because God doesn't need, just need echoes. God just doesn't need just someone that's going to regurgitate something. They need people that are filled with who he is. And that's my assignment as your pastor for you to become filled with who he is so we can change this world. Amen? Amen. So they called them to him, and it says this. It says, and he gave them power. Gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. Wow. So he gave them, he called them to him, and he gave them power. But as we learned already, he gave them power over unclean spirits, to ca- meaning he wants us to bring peace to someone that's not in a place of pe- peace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Amen. He wanted, if someone is filled with demons, they don't have peace. Right. right? So he was calling them to him. He empowered them because of that, because of that connection for them to go out and bring pee to be peacemakers. I think I sat on my glasses. It's like, okay. (laughs) Yeah, this feels weird. It's like. (laughs) Uh, Thank you, Lord. Uh, 
And my eyes have peace. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. So, let's go down to verse 5, because he just calls their names, the 12 of them. It says, he says, These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes, a new way of living, a new way of being, a new way of doing things, righteousness, peace, and joy. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, meaning it's here. We're not waiting for it. It's here. It's already here. Yeah. Then it says, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you receive, freely give. I love that part because the Lord spoke this to me years ago when I was so shy and I was so insecure about the, you know, being called or being a pastor, being able to, you know, look, what can I, Lord, how do, how do you do this? And when I, the Lord showed me that scripture, freely give, whatever you've been given, whatever you've received, freely give it. And the Lord gave, brought so much strength to me in, in this one statement. And he goes, Justin, I've only asked you to give what you already have. So stop questioning the calling on your life. And say, well, why do I do this? How do you do this? And when are you gonna, when's that going to happen? God just says, hey, just give what I've given you. Nothing more, nothing less. Because you you're not going to be able to release the anointing in someone's life if it's not a revelation to you. So here, everything he was telling them to do were about being peacemakers. And he empowered them. He equipped them. Verse 9, provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor staff, for a workman, worker is worthy of his food. Verse 11, now whatever city or town you enter, inquire in it who in it is worthy. Now this word worthy does not mean who's good enough. The word worthy here actually means to receive. So see who in it will receive you. And he says, stay there till you go out. And when you go into a house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your what? Your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. So what does he tell the 12 disciples? Hey, go do this. Go be a peacemaker. When you go into that city, if they receive you, let your peace come upon it. Not everybody's going to receive everything you have to say. Look for the opportunity in the midst of conversations because where conversations that tend and lean toward God to someone that's unsaved, that's someone that's ready to receive. Amen. And he says, let your peace come upon it. But if they don't, they don't want what you have, let your peace return to you. Because there's someone that's going to receive the peacemaker that you are. Let's go to Luke 10. Let's go to Luke 10. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Look at verse 62 of, actually start chapter 9, verse 62, and then we'll go into chapter 10. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's some of you, you got you to stop looking back. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's just a side note. That just, so that seed right there. Let's go to chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70. So we saw in Matthew 10 where they appointed the 10, 12, here he's appointing the 70. 
And he sent them two by two before his face to, into every city and place where he himself about to go. And then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, or sandals, and greet no one along the road. So this was a message that Jesus constantly talked, right? This wasn't just a one-time thing to the 12 disciples. He told the exact same thing to, to the 12, and now he's telling the same thing to the 70. And he gives them instructions. Go your way, behold, verse 5. But whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. Now look at verse 6. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon it. If a son of peace is there, your peace will come upon it. Your peace will rest on it. Your peace. Not Jesus' peace, but the peace that's on the inside of you. Yeah. Now, now, get this. This was before the Holy Ghost came. This is something that they were doing under the old covenant. And they had the ability to release a peace and a power to see signs and wonders and miracles under the old covenant. How much more under the new covenant with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, being poured out into the earth upon all flesh. Yes. Hallelujah. And remain in that same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter, and they what receive you. Eat such things that are set before you. And what does that tell you to do? And heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. So here, once again, we're seeing a connection of the kingdom of God and healing and deliverance. Why? Because the kingdom is all about bringing peace. Yes. Verse 10, but whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, Go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this. Nevertheless, meaning even though I wipe off my dust of my feet, he's saying, nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that the kingdom of God was here to do something for you. You know what? People come to church week in and week out, and they're in the presence of the kingdom, and they walk out the same way. Why? Because they didn't truly realize that they were in the midst of the kingdom. We have to come to the place that, not in a prideful way, but we need to come to the place that when people are in our presence, they are in the midst of the kingdom. They are in the midst of the kingdom. When people drive by our property, wait a minute, what's going on there? On. And it, it's happened. Trust me, I, I've, I've heard it. People have told us. One, person, one guy drove by, and, and he was going to a Baptist church down the road, and, and all of a sudden he, was, he went by, and he, he drove past it. He had to do a U-turn and come back. Why? Because there was something here that was drawing him. Yeah. And I'm telling you, we have buildings to build. I, I you need to release your faith with me. You know, we have a youth building next door that can hold a couple hundred people, and the Lord hasn't given us permission to go back to two services, but why can't we fill this building and that building every Sunday morning? Why can't we? I mean, there's satellite churches all over the world that, that are constantly growing. I mean, we just be a satellite next door. I mean, can, can you agree? Can we do that? Can we, can we come to a place where we, build, we fill both buildings? Amen. But if you're not kingdom-minded, you're not even going to believe for that. You're just going to be worried about, I need this, and I need that, and I need that, and I need this. See, some of us need to come to a place where we realize that if we get in line and we get in the, the trenches with someone that's believing for a breakthrough, that as we get in with them and we bring peace to their situation, God's got me. God's got me. Yes, sir. Woo. Hallelujah. 
So let your peace come upon it when you come into those houses. The kingdom of God is near you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Where to, Lord? Let's go to John. John 20. So we see the 12, we see the 70. Let's look at verse 19 of John 20. Right above this, it says in my Bible, the Apostles' Commission. It says, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Let me give you, in that statement, Jesus gave us the same exact assignment that he had. Yes, sir. Amen. Well, what's the assignment for my life, Pastor Justin? Well, I don't know all the ins and outs, but I do know this. It's the same as Jesus's. Yeah. It may look a little different, but it's still going to be the same bringing the kingdom of God to the earth. Verse 22, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. So when they said that, receive the Holy Spirit, that's not when they got filled with the Holy Spirit. That's when they got born again. That's what, that was the very same thing that when God breathed into the nostrils of Adam and said they became, breathed upon them, and they became another, really translation says, another speaking spirit. And that Adam and Eve lost all that. But yet we see the same exact thing here, that when he breathed on them, what happened? They also now became new creations. And some people have asked, well, well, you know, I got filled with the Spirit when I got born again. I've had long conversations with some religious people about this. And I said, well, if that's when you receive the Spirit, why would Jesus say go to Jerusalem until you get filled with it? Peace. Peace. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. You got got time for two more scriptures? Or or say two more sets of scriptures? I'm about done with my assignment for this morning, and then I I believe God wants to do something. Holy Ghost wants to do something. So that was the Apostles' Commission. But we also know... After he, after he rose from the dead, after he was seen, we also know that he told us the Great Commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Luke 24, 49's account says, go into all the world because you're witnesses of these things, meaning you've experienced this, but go to Jerusalem and tell you're endued with power from on high. So look at Acts 1, verse 1. It says, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. See, he began it. Began both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandment to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days Now get this, and speaking the things pertaining to the kingdom. Verse 4, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, 
When they have come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the, utter, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So Jesus sent the 12, empowered them. He sent the 70, he empowered them. He commissioned the apostles, and then he sent you and I. And he gave us everything that we would need. Everything that we would need. He gave us the gifts of the Spirit, gave us the fruit of the Spirit. He gave us the Word of God, gave us the grace of God, gave us everything that we need to be successful to bring the kingdom of God into the earth. Let me close with this. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Danny, you can come up. As my Father sent me, so I send you. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. I'd like to read this whole chapter, but we'll just go to verse 26. Actually, I need to do verse 25. Actually, I need to verse 24. (laughs) I now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and it says, fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ, for the sake of his body, which is the church. Man. See, Jesus is the head, we're his body. Of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you. So what was it? To fulfill the word of God. To fulfill the word of God. You see, the great commission that was placed upon our lives is a word from God. That means we're to fulfill the word of God. To fulfill the word of God, verse 26, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations. So this is something that's been hidden. If it's hidden, then it can't be seen. But it says, now has been revealed to his saints, meaning now he's talking about you and I. There's something now that's been hidden. It was a mystery. It was a mystery. We couldn't see it. We couldn't understand it. But now it's been revealed to us. Hallelujah. Revealed to his saints. Verse 27. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The anointing in you, the hope of glory. The empowerment that is upon you, the hope of glory. The grace of God in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. So this lets me know that, that I am God, that Jesus on the inside of me, and it tells, it tells us it's a mystery to all the saints, but you know what? It's been revealed to us, meaning we don't have any excuse any longer because Christ is in me, the hope of glory. We should come to the place where you say, hey, you want to know what glory looks like? Hey, look at my life. Look at my life. And this is what the church should be personified as, as we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. And it says, what is the hope of glory all about? What is it for? Let's look at the next verse. It says, him we preach, warning every man. You could say encouraging every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. Now, get this, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. So why is Christ in you? So you can feel glory bumps? Why is the glory in you? Why is the kingdom of God in you? It tells us Christ is in us for a reason that, that we might make all men, that we might perfect all men, that we might, we might bring peace to all men. Amen. Christ isn't in you just so you could say you're a Christian. No, Christ is in you that you might present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Then verse 29, to this end I also labor, striving according to his working, 
His working, which works in me mightily. God's working in me. Is he working in you? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Hallelujah. If you're a child of God, stand to your feet.